Well, thanks so much for tuning in to this conversation on Talking Point today. Uh, our guest today is Mihir Modi, the group CFO of Sterlite Technologies. And they have come out with the quarterly numbers wherein uh, the revenues at about 1475 crores versus uh, comparable of 13.1 for our taken quarter and quarter. The profit numbers and EBITDA numbers have looked pretty strong as well. They're one multi year, multi million global deals too. So let's talk about all of that. Uh, Mihir, good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. Put this quarter into perspective for us. When you started off quarter four, was this something that you guys were aiming for? Has it turned out to be better than estimated? Or do you reckon that it could have been slightly better had it not been for restrictions? Uh, th thank you, Neeraj. And uh, first of all, hope everybody is safe. Uh, uh, coming to business, yes, indeed. I think, uh, you know, we're happy to announce the results uh, at, at 1475. I think, I think uh, the way we were looking at, at uh, quarter four while entering it is that uh, we needed to get back into a growth momentum on the revenue side. I think you know, effectively in January, we believed we had put COVID behind us. Uh, little did we know that that it would it would raise its head again. Uh, but but um, uh, our endeavor uh, remained to kind of continue the growth momentum, uh, not just versus you know, same period of the previous year, but also, you know, sequentially quarter on quarter, uh, which is which is how we want to look at our business from here on. Uh, given the sheer, uh, you know, momentum of demand, there is so much strong demand uh, that, that uh, you know, we, we have an opportunity to continue to grow uh, just sequentially as well. Okay, just so that I, I get this right, you are telling me next quarter onwards I should view your business on a quarter on quarter basis. Uh, uh, well, uh, you know, our aim is certainly to, to do that. Uh, it, what I would say is uh, last uh, period we looked at H2. Uh, and we looked at six month periods because there will be some some kind of uh, lumpiness and in, in you know depending on the project depending on these external environments like for example uh, this quarter uh, there is the second wave of covid impact uh, but i can tell you that if you look at our h1 of fy22 uh, we will be sequentially better than the h2 of fy21 okay oh and I, I thought you did reasonably okay in H2 of FY21. So that's a, a good enough uh, guidance to this. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, and, and yeah, I think, I think the, the intention is clearly to take advantage of the, the tailwinds that we have. Uh, I think, you know, 5G worldwide is, is already on the anvil. Uh, I think 146 operators have already started offering commercial 5G services. Uh, on on the FTTH side, way back in India, uh, Airtel is planning thousand cities uh, 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 and and about forty million home passes on FTTH uh, over the next eighteen months or so. Geo has its plans to do seventy five million home passes over over the next kind of two to three years. So I think I think we have enough tailwind, we have enough uh, uh, you know opportunity uh, of growth. Uh, and and we just need to focus and get get our act right. Uh, we are all set for that. Now, just before I come to the longer term growth opportunity, just a couple of uh, not really near term, but uh, slightly numerical questions, if you will. Um, you you won a number of deals. I I saw that the announcements of the, the three year strategic collaboration with the Open Reach uh, for UK uh, in the MEA region. You've gotten some deals. I think there's something that you signed up with Airtel as well. Um, can you tell us if all of this happened in quarter four and, and part two, does this have the, uh, how do I say, it? the optional value to move up as work uh, starts spreading out and actually starting to happen on the ground? Uh, so, so uh, yes, to answer your, your uh, first part of the question, yes, indeed, all this has happened uh, as in when we announced it, which is pretty much in the last three, four months. Uh, so, yes, it's, it's, it's all these are recent wins uh, and we've announced it as, as they happened. Uh, 
from an execution standpoint uh, some of these are are uh, executable uh, in the immediate term whereas some of uh, and some others are more longer term three year kind of contracts so so uh, the execution of this will will uh, be be over over depending on what that contract is over that period of time i think if i zoom out and look at the larger picture of the orders that we won in our open order book so today we stand at about 10700 crore of of open order book as on 31st of march uh, out of which about 5 and a half thousand is is executable uh, in in the next 12 months or so and the remaining and, kind of goes outside yeah i i actually saw your presentation i think nearly 5 5 and a half in fy22 5 5 and a half in fy23 that's right okay and 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 i'm guessing you will take fresh orders as well which would mean uh, i'm just presuming out here me since we're talking numbers that if you've done slightly sub 5000 crores in fy22 and if this entire order book of slightly over 5000 crores without fresh orders is executable in fy23 suffice to say that and going by your statement that h1 of fy22 will be better than h2 of fy21 um you are looking at uh, anywhere between 10 to 30% growth um in fy22 or fy21 would that be a fair assumption Uh, yeah, look i since we do not give uh, guidance on the full year numbers I, you know i wouldn't want to to state a number but but neeraj i think absolutely the way we are looking at it is is you know falling within the range of what you are saying i think i think we are looking at at uh, you know the next 6 months kind of getting better than the previous 6 months and so on and so forth and therefore yes if we mathematically pull it up it will land around those numbers uh, but yeah yeah I, i think that's the that's the end of it uh that's the effort that we are making and and we're pretty confident of of getting there given all that we see around uh i i must say i think this is the right time to kind of talk about also the current uh disruption the short term disruption uh because of the second wave of covid uh so so you know some some things may move here and there we are we are uh you know looking at a situation which is similar to what was there last year in march uh but but i also want to quickly say that i believe businesses this year or or this march and april are significantly better prepared than mm-hmm. they were last march and april in terms of you know dealing with business continuity etc uh, so kind of you know all the the mixed bag of environmental uh, execution level disruption however offset by strong demand growth and our preparedness to deal with it uh net net i am confident of of uh, you know a good fy22 as as we go ahead and broken down into the two halves that we spoke about okay just a quick follow up me uh, as of now we haven't seen a full lockdown yesterday i saw a report by the high court has asked state of maharashtra to enact a 15 day full lockdown much like what is was in 2020 would yes. that disrupt these numbers meaningfully or 15 days is something that a business like you can tie over uh so, uh so so if it's 15 days uh then can we can we can tide over it uh okay. i i think i think uh so one is our plants and manufacturing facility etc given that we are a part of the telecom sector uh we we have an exception to continue those running at at uh, the levels that we'd like to run uh, uh of course there is a human element of it and we don't want to put our people at risk uh so so again the, there is a balance there and that's one of the reasons i am also looking at the next 6 months as as how i am assessing my business right. rather than one month three months kind of a time frame i mean look things move you know in a shorter period but when you look at the direction and you enlarge it i think there is a chance to kind of come back uh, catch up for what's lost and and i think uh, if anything is lost we are we are uh, confident that it will be temporary yeah no no me i i i didn't even want i i'm hoping nobody who's listening this looks at your business with a one quarter perspective because that we just actually don't want to get any business let alone yours and in your case even more so um just up um before we talk about the the nature of the deals and what's the kind of conversations that we are having with large global players can i ask you one thing me um uh, the last um 3 4 years that i've looked at sterlite tech very very closely or reasonably closely while we i'm at google quick um we've seen i've i've seen the business um have uh, reached the zenith of sorts and then because of the commodity price let crash or or the optic fiber prices coming off even though anand keeps on saying that this is not how it will impact star like tech we've seen anecdotal evidence of some or the other reason because of which operational metrics 
even revenues in certain cases in certain quarters have come off quite materially my question is how much of a threat does that possess to anything that you envisage your business to do in fy22 uh you mean the the commodity pricing yes please okay uh, uh, and the optic fiber pricing per se uh, optic uh, and, and what kind of yeah understood understood uh, uh, i think i think uh, so you're right i think there was some impact uh, for a certain period of time i think how it has panned out over over the last few quarters in particular uh, despite the dip in pricing i think there are two or three things that have happened that i'd like to share with you i think one is while uh, the uh, fiber price from a commodity and spot uh pricing standpoint did drop uh and it did have an effect on the overall pricing or realization that we could command uh we our realizations were always better than than uh what was on the spot pricing and they continue to be that way uh so that's point number 1 it was not as as impacted second uh what we see now not just believe but what we already see now is that the fiber pricing have have bottomed out and have started to move up again uh, uh, marginally but the direction is upwards and we believe that that that's the the uh, direction it will take uh, if not in a big way certainly not going reverse the third thing i would want to say here is uh, from stl standpoint what we are also doing is we are constructing solutions for our clients and i'll give you an example of that uh which command premium uh for what we are offering them for example our cable celesta cable which has 6912 fibers in one cable which is the first in the world uh, uh typically it is it is from 612k uh, fiber in a cable to 100 200 Uh, fibers in a cable, and and this is six thousand nine hundred, so almost seven thousand fiber in one cable, uh, and and this is a delivered order, uh, so it's not about something that that we're thinking about. Right? This is this is one that that we have already uh, uh, created and delivered to to a customer in the US. Uh, that helps us get the premiums that that we uh, uh, get over the the. general market pricing i think all these factors i think i would mention one more one more last point on on the fiber price again the world has pretty much kind of getting divided into the chinese market and the non chinese market uh and and as you know from our numbers and the geographic split of our revenues etc that uh, we are focusing a lot on on the european market in the in the american market and there uh again the pricing dynamics are are getting decoupled to some extent from from the the chinese kind of fiber pricing that that drops so i think all of these have its contribution into making uh, assuring us or making us believe that uh the the price impact of fiber as a commodity has is behind us and we are looking at at that not coming in the way of our growth uh i will quickly add one more thing i think which is very important from an stl standpoint which is that uh, as we go further uh, with bare fiber sales is a very small part of of you know it's getting smaller and smaller of our revenues uh, yes. not just that uh, services is also growing uh, our access solutions business is all set with some very very good products that are ready and and we are going to market uh, so i think i think therefore uh, the impact of one element into our revenue mix now the way we have grown and where we have diversified in our offering uh, uh, I, i am very comfortable that that there will not be meaningful impact great no so please uh, you know me uh, the point is i i never doubted that you would get a premium over the market just that if the market would have corrected Uh, yes you would have the premium but maybe the numbers would come down and i can very well see that how in fy21 as well while the global optic fiber market was flattish you guys have still shown some growth so i'm no doubt that you will grow faster than the market the the only question was whether the pricing and the market itself is 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 going to be sluggish or no so thanks for clarifying that i'm guessing you on both you're saying a firm and unequivocal no yes um, let, let let's talk about the other piece as well so we've discussed at length about the order books uh for 
optic fiber and the deals that you've got and so on and so forth. You mentioned the other businesses. This is something that I think you guys have spoken about for the last three, four years that Sterling is a, is, is a bit of a conglomerate of two, three pieces now. You planned it out about it maybe three, four years ago or maybe longer. Are you saying that now it is coming to fructification and therefore, how do you envisage me here? Uh, say FY23, the quantum of contribution of optic fiber business to your overall pie uh, versus the others. And what's the resultant impact that it has on return ratios for you? Because I, I know that two, two years ago, in order to get, get a steadiness in the business, you took a compromise on the return ratios a little bit, but because it was a long-term positive. So tell us a bit about uh, two years out for Starlight Tech. Indeed, indeed. So uh, let me let me uh, talk about the the next twelve months and then two years out uh, in, in brief. I think uh, next twelve to eighteen months will be we'll have three growth levers that we are looking at uh, that will that will help us uh, move ahead. One is like you rightly said in our in our uh, uh, connectivity solutions business, which is our fiber cables products business. Uh, we have we have increased our capacities and and you know like like you said, or the return on capital employed. We we took a little bit of of uh, you know uh, investment bet there, and therefore we were okay with with uh, having slightly lower. But now we are back to to a, a good ROC in quarter four itself as my capex cycle comes to its peak. And then we will we will utilize it fully, and, and we are monetizing that fully. That the capacity increase uh, coupled with the utilization of capacity increase uh, will drive one part of the growth. Second part of the growth again comes from the product business itself. Uh, as you must be aware, we acquired a company called Optotech, which is into optical interconnect uh, products in Italy. Uh, that has suddenly opened up another about $12 billion of global market. So if the fiber market, uh, cable market, fiber cable market globally is about $7, $8 billion, uh, optical interconnect is, is $12 to $13 billion. Uh, and, and suddenly we've acquired the capability and therefore our addressable market has uh, you know, kind of multiplied by two and a half times uh, in that, that uh, segment of our business alone. So that's one growth driver. The second growth driver that is going to come about is uh, as we take our services business to to Europe, uh, outside India and, and Europe in particular, to be to be uh, transparent about it. Uh, so that's another kind of you know while India continues to grow on the services side, I think we are bolting on additional market geographically uh, in the services segment. And that's that's the other lever of growth that is going to come about. Uh, last but not the least, with 5G uh, coming up in a big way with ORAN happening, uh, our access solutions business, which, which we spoke about, we've been investing in it for the last couple of years at least. Uh, now we are ready to go to market and we have uh, some deals also that have been lined up and we expect uh, to book some revenues uh, in FY22 itself, and now talking about out of FY23, uh, we expect it to become a, a meaningful business in, in FY23. Uh, you asked me about the proportions. Given the fact that our connectivity solutions business is also on a growth trajectory, uh, right? Our, our mix may not change substantially, while access solutions may become, let's say, two years from now, about 5% of our business, uh, the other two will, will remain balanced, uh, you know, half and half. Uh, but but uh, why is the access solutions business going to remain only 5%, uh, despite we being very optimistic about it, is because from a percentage sense, the, the other business is also growing at a very, very good pace. Uh, and that's that's the message I want to drive home, that it's, it's it's all three are going to grow, and therefore uh, the the proportions may not vary significantly because one is not growing at the cost of other. Got it. Uh, and thank you for that. Need uh, last uh, couple of questions. Uh, one, would you reckon Sterlite Tech as an entity will need to do any kind of fundraising over the course of the next twelve months in order to fund the ambitious growth plans? Uh, 
Uh, so our current plans do not require additional uh, fundraising. Uh, in fact, our plan is to reduce the debt. Uh, you know, to to what we we've, we've said to a zero point five debt equity ratio levels. Uh, but look, Entirely I think by internal approvals, or do you need to maybe issue equity or anything for that? No, no. So this the plan is to do internal accruals and and go down that path. I think we will our capex spends will peak out in FY twenty two, and from there on we will take the journey. Uh, we will throw up decent amount of cash uh, in the form of internal accruals to to uh, you know start reducing reducing our our debt levels. Uh, but I would also say that uh, look, if there are large opportunities uh, that we notice. Uh, then are we open to it? Yeah, we are open to it. I think I think I wouldn't, you know, in business, particularly in in such high growth. You know, I mean, th this is going to be next ten years of of a growth cycle in this sector and and uh, in our business. And and you know, uh, if something comes up, am I saying no? I have made up my mind, and this is how it's going to be. No, the answer is no. Current plans don't require any any fundraise. Uh, but yeah, can we be ambitious about it? Why not? Okay, last question is, uh, large organizations, typically which are trying to be non-cyclical in nature, set some targets about operational metrics, for return ratios, what have you. Have you guys done that? FY, at the end of FY21, have you set targets for FY24, 25, 23, or what ROI, ROC you want to be there? What are the kind of operational margins that you want to uh, do yes. a steady state performance? Yes, yes. So two important metrics, uh, along with the sales metric that that we had set ourselves. I think uh, the the two the ones the, that you are alluding to, I have two in that category, and we've all uh, uh, we've even communicated that to to our stakeholders uh, uh, in in at, at a few forums. Uh, one is a debt equity ratio of zero point five, uh, yeah. and and the other one is a ROCE of twenty percent plus. Uh, and that's that's the that's the uh, you know two metrics at a company level that that we are chasing. Uh, we are already uh, you know ahead of it in some quarters. I mean the last quarter was 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 uh, very very healthy. Uh, but on a full year basis, on a sustainable basis, uh, that these are the two numbers that we are chasing. From an EBITDA margin level, we expect it to be eighteen percentage at a company level. Um, and and I say this because. Uh, you know, I say 18 percentage because uh, it, there will be certain calls for R&D, etc. Our R&D spends have already gone up to three percent of revenue this quarter, uh, and we we you know, there's a there's a uh, delicate balance that we want to maintain between uh, having the right level of margins at the same time not under investing for the sake of EBITDA margins. Uh, so that's that's the way I will look at it. Okay, me. this was lovely. Thank you so much for a broad picture perspective from you. But the first time that we're talking on the Starlight Tech um, uh, platform you know, of sorts. So lovely talking to you today and all the best for the quarters again. Thank you very much, Neeraj. Pleasure, pleasure to talk to you. Likewise. And viewers, thanks for tuning into this edition of the Talking Talk.